Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. Everybody, this is Brian. Joining me as usual is Heno. Hello. And this is the crazy life. <laughs> uh, no Jen this week because um, she took a, a trip to Florida to see her mom, and uh, you know, so hopefully she had a great time. And uh, she'll probably be back next week, I guess. We'll see. She does this every year, right? Yeah. Yep. Lucky duck. <laughs> yeah. She flies down there for a couple days usually. Sometimes it's a week. Depends on, you know, just how things work out. But yeah. Yeah. It's pretty nice. They had a nice place and real relaxed area and stuff. It's so. Yep. So, you know, first of all, I guess, uh, thank you to everyone who's returned and, uh, welcome to everyone who's new listening to our show. And, uh, yeah, I don't uh I don't have anything else here to say. <laughs> <laughs> so Heno, how was your week? <laughs> it's been uh pretty good. I had a let's see. I had a serious meltdown one night. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. The next night I realized Uh, I guess, uh, how do I, how do I phrase it? I went to my men's group and I realized I was dumb. <laughs> Cause I had a meltdown the night before. <laughs> oh, right, right. That makes sense. Well, all right. So after the meltdown, I felt like, I, well, no, I never felt justified. I just didn't know how to, what to do with it. And then the next night, like I literally, I, it was funny as in them. So, just the whole campaign thing is everything's deadlines and times and blah, blah, blah. And I can be as busy as I want to be. Right. Is pretty much it. If I want to spend all my time on this, I can. It's no problem. And there was one day when I came, it was on Wednesday, I came home and, oh, that's right. I posted that video of me uh, taking the whipped cream canister oh, and yeah. shooting it straight in my mouth right yeah. i was just i'm done <laughs> yep oh that's right we were gonna b- probably podcast that night so, yeah that yeah. was uh so yeah I, i'll get to that when i talk <laughs> yeah this is perfect this is great we're gonna full circle this thing so so I, i'm i'm heading home and i'm just tired we had i did uh i did a candidates forum the day before in the morning which turned out to be just a total bust but it was a great experience yeah uh, um and at the same time, there was a newspaper from Twin Falls that had contacted me about getting, you know, they had like a couple of questions and 
they basically just wanted a press release that touched on some things, and and I really wanted to get that to them in a timely manner. Yeah. Because I, the thing with all these guys is very few of them give you deadlines. They just say as soon as possible or blah blah blah, and it's like, well, what does that mean? Is that is that in a week? You know, you know, give me your deadline. Yeah, exactly. But I was like, all right, I just want to get this done. I want to have both of them done. So. I did all the, the prep work. I wrote my little, I had to do four minute presentation at this forum. So I did that and I practiced it and, and I finished this other thing. And Wednesday came along and, and, you know, it's just a lot of late nights and early mornings and, and I was just tired and I had a great day. No problem at work. It was a great day at work, but I came home and I knew I was lagging. I'm like, okay, I got to be podcast ready. Coffee. Just straight sugar into the face. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, I was literally sitting there with a black cup of coffee and I take a sip and shoot some, some whipped cream, <laughs> which, you know, it's like, it, I usually don't have a can of whipped cream in the fridge. You just happen to have one. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> and it was just like, this is the mood I'm in right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then, and then I was good. I was ready. But at that point, uh, you know, I didn't want to really, you know, I was just waiting and then, you know, and then I heard from you. I'm like, okay, great. No podcast tonight. I'm doing nothing. So I decide I'm going to play some video games and I'm playing video games and Sharon needed me to do something for her. And I just didn't want to, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I really, it wasn't a big, it's not something that I, it's not like I, it's not something that I, I that I wouldn't want to do. It's, you know, it's a technical thing. It was a computer thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, I do this all the time. It's yeah. not a big deal. But for some reason, I decided to have a whole temper tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it came out of honest frustration. It, it had nothing to do with her. It yeah. was, it was, I've been ignoring certain things in the house. One of them being just the piles of stuff gathering everywhere. Oh, yeah. And she needed some space. And I picked up some things to move them. And I realized that there was nowhere to move them. Uh, like right. I literally looked around and I lost it. I just started <laughs> just throwing stuff, not in a mean way. I just right. started tossing stuff randomly all over the house. So your <laughs> iPad like, well, is safe, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you didn't get to that level. Cause it was no, like, exactly, if you're going to no. start wasting iPads, I'll take yeah, them exactly. instead. <laughs> <laughs> like Brian appears out of nowhere, dives, <laughs> yeah. saves it. It's like, I'll take that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I just hand you like it's a piece of cardboard kind of a thing, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just says, I just wrote iPad on it. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> it's like in one day, the tractor beam, uh, teleportation device is created. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brian's hand comes out of nowhere. <laughs> right. And that's the first thing I use it for, you know, not, yes. not to do any good anywhere, but <laughs> plus you also had, uh, you've developed ESP. <laughs> yeah. My, my In iPad other words, sense you're, is tingling. You're, yeah. Your, your cue from the yeah, Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. That'd be trouble. And then rather than just going and grabbing an I, iPad, from Best Buy, brand <laughs> yeah. new. You're like, nope, I'm going to save Henos. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so, uh, eventually, I I got to work, and 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 you know, it was it was just, anybody that's anybody out there that's listening to this that understands computers. When you open up that understands, I'm sorry, Windows based computers. When you open up a laptop that is still has Windows 8 on it. And it hasn't been an updated at all in years. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. And it's like, okay, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> but ev eventually I just gave up on the updating and we got the, I, I never used uh, go to meeting before. I've never even seen it before. Oh yeah. Because we use, we do everything on Skype on here and mm -hmm. uh, really, really neat uh program uh you know it took a little while to get it going and then realize that i'm not updating this you know just make sure updates don't happen in the middle of her her interview and yeah. and uh like we're good to go and then you know yesterday i actually updated everything to windows 10 and blah 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 and this and that and it's like okay cool yeah. um but it was the next night I'm, I'm going to my men's so oh yeah so in the middle of all this on my phone um uh, my alarm pops up telling me that I'm chairing the meeting Thursday night. <laughs> and it was like, great. One more thing I have to do. Right. You know, I'm just, I'm just being generally 
hissy. Right. <laughs> this will teach you to, you know, have action as your word at the beginning of the year. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So I, so I, I, I walk into the, I had an idea for what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about uh, balance was one on t- what I wanted to talk about. Cause I'm in a place where I, I, I can be very unbalanced and I'm trying really hard. I'm, I'm getting to the gym, not as much as I'd like to, but I'm getting there and I'm, you know, I'm doing things, but not you know, it's there. There can't be balance right now. There's there's something bigger than everything else happening. Right. And uh, and I was just kind of curious how you know I, I wanted to get my my brother's opinion on it. And then I walked into the room and I went, wait a minute, it's October, and there's a, we have a, a a book of daily reflections. And I'm like October seventh. That's my favorite reading in the world. I I have to do it tonight. And I open it up, and the minute I started reading it, I was like, oh. <laughs> goodness <laughs> all right hello you failed miserably because it talks it talks about the 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 reason i love this this reading and i've shared it on here before it talks about i am the master of my reality i control what happens inside of me if i choose to right and that it's my prerogative and responsibility not to act negatively and it's a very high bar to set because and in the end it talks about whoever or whatever is upsetting me is really my greatest teacher. Yeah. I should be thanking them for teaching me something. Because it's a reflection of my reaction is not a reflection of them, it's a reflection of me and where I am. Right. And I was not in a good place from the get-go. And I handled, I did not use my choice the night before. Right. Uh, I, I just reacted mm-hmm. instead of acting. And I, and, and I want to be a better actor and less of a reactor. Right. And, and it's, I will never get this down, but boy, do I want to be good at it. I really do. (laughs) It's really, cause I feel better when I, when, when I act the right way, when I act appropriately, when I'm right sized. So it was a great lesson for me. And then Friday, I will, or even Thursday night, I've kind of felt like, okay, you know, I've been burning the candle too much. I could feel like the little bit of a cold kicking in. And by Friday, I woke up with a headache and just nothing major, just kind of low grade, yeah. you know, which is almost worse. Yeah. And, you know, and, but I got, I got my, uh, uh, campaign signs came in on Friday. Yeah. And I saw, I saw you post those. Those look good. They look really great. Yeah. And I, I did. I didn't do too much over the weekend. I just kind of, I, I took care of stuff around the house. You know, it's, it's, you know, the leaves are falling and, uh, you know, there's things that need to get done. Winterization has to happen right now. And, and I just chose to do mostly that. And, um, we went and, and Sharon was awesome. She, she stepped up and helped me put some signs out last night and, uh, it was really cool. So yeah, uh, it, all in all, it's, all in all is a great week, especially any time that I, you know, get a mirror shoved in front of my face <laughs> <laughs> reminding right. me that, that I still have lots of work to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it is funny. You know, you can feel that you've come so far and, oh, yeah. s- and still be so humbled, you know, really simply, oh, yeah. you know, you're like, Whoa, wow. I still have a long way to go. <laughs> Oh, and it's, it's a great topic anytime I bring it up with, with the men because they all, we all struggle with this. I can say we because we're not a bunch of Buddhists. I mean, that's for sure. <laughs> right. None of us are. Yeah. And it's great when, when, you know, when you, I end up ultimately hearing a lot of honest, honesty from my friends. And, 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 and it, there's usually a bunch of epiphanies because just like me, somebody goes, Oh wow. Yeah. That's what's been going, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Like, oh yeah, I haven't been doing this 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 and this. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> right? Exactly. You know, no wonder asked somebody asked me if I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, but oh, I did have a really amazing thing happen um that I wanted to share with you. On Friday, when I was playing my video game, I was in a match and I got done and there was a guy that there was, uh, well, I didn't know if it was a guy or a girl, but it turned out to be a dude that I don't even remember what they did. 
But, oh, that's what it was. The game ended, and he was super just polite. He got trounced. <laughs> His team got just <laughs> annihilated. And it, just the way he said something, I was like, you know, I, 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 you, we have this system where you can give people thumbs ups and thumbs down. And so I gave him a thumbs up and I sent him a message. I said, Hey, by the way, I gave you a thumbs up because, you know, you were really, you were really cool at handling that, you know, a defeat. Yeah. And, and, and the response back was, thank you so much, uh, uh, for saying that I really needed that. I'm, I'm really struggling with depression right now and, and I'm having a hard time. Awesome. And it was like, wow. I mean, I was just so instantly moved. And I, I first said, you know, thank you for saying something mm-hmm. that's going to help you. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, and I, you know, if you ever need to text me, if you need someone to talk to, you know, please get, please get in touch with me and, mm-hmm. and, and it, it, it can get better. Yeah. You know, and I just say, keep doing what you're doing. Keep, keep being open and honest and not isolating. Yeah, you know, really however is. It's you the do best it. way to fight it. Yeah, yeah, is to connect, is to stay connecting with people. Yes, you're struggling, but yep. but don't but don't stop. Don't don't get quiet. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Basically. Yep. You know, and it was oh, I just sat there. I was like, this, this you know, because I even told him I said, so I do this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, right you know. into promotion. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can I make this about me? <laughs> Do you know who but I am? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, the, the truth is I didn't even say what it was. Yeah. I just said, you know, I happened to do a podcast on mental health. You know, and I figured right. if he asked, I'd say something. Right, right. Um, uh, but it was, it was just great to, just to, to relate to, you know, to be, to be able to relate to someone that, that, you know, the old me would have, wouldn't have known what to say to that cat. Yeah. The new me knows how to respond. And that's because I'm talking to you and Jen and everyone out there. And it just filled me with gratitude, you know, that, that I, that I could actually say something to someone. Yeah. And not feel like a complete, you know, goober. Right. And that's why, you know, each week at the end of the show, when I'm like, reach out to somebody because like this, it was something you were just like, Hey, you know what? Thanks for being cool. Cause so many people are not, I'm sure in that game. Oh yeah. We're, Oh, you know, at least from my gaming experience, you know, there's all sorts of sore losers. So, uh, and sore winners. Um, you know, so it, it was nice of you to reach out and then it turned into like, you know, just a weird situation or not weird, but you know, interesting yeah. situation because of how it, it finished, you know? So that's, that's really awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. That's exactly so why I you? pointed out. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's been pretty, pretty mild week. Um, I'm still, I'm still having the like shakiness a little bit that I was dealing with. Um, and, uh, I, I went to my psychiatrist this week and I was like, well, I'm going to mention it to him cause to make sure it's not something he's put me on, but also because the psychiatrist is a doctor, you know, they're, mm-hmm. so if it's another medicine, he's, you know, he may be like, Oh, it's this, you know? And, um, you know, it turns out that, um, uh, he, he thinks it might be, um, I guess when you go on Wellbutrin, it can make your antidepressant work more basically. Like it makes it to where, uh, it, it does a better job, you know? Oh, um, interesting. So what could happen is my, my Trintelix could be at too high of a level basically. And that's what's pushing me, you know, into the shakiness and whatnot. So he's actually going to lower my Trintelix and, you know, for, uh, I think it's about a month. Uh, I should, I think I go back in like a month, something like that. And, uh, you know, and then we'll see if I'm still having it. Cause if I'm still having it, he's like, you know, then you're going to need to talk to your, uh, general practitioner. You know, he's like, cause it may not be medicine related. It might be something else. So, huh? Like, all right. So, yeah, it's not that bad most of the time, but it's just, there's some points where I just, I just cannot stop my hand from shaking. And it's super frustrating because the left one shakes more than the right one. And I'm left-handed, you know? <laughs> so, you know, there's wow. been days where I'm like, well, I'm not cutting anything in the kitchen, <laughs> you know, cause I don't want to handle yeah. a big sharp knife with my hand shaking like crazy. Uh, <laughs> seems like yeah. A, that'd be no bueno. Right. Seems like a bad idea. Yeah. Um, you know, but like even, you know, going to write and stuff, it's like, you know, it's like, boy, I'm glad I can, you know, use my phone because, <laughs> you know, I can, mm-hmm. 
at least type with my right hand or something. But yeah, it's, it's, it's annoying. And when it kicks up, it gets really, it really makes my anxiety, um, jump, you know? And Mm -hmm. so there's obviously various reasons I want to get taken care of because one, I don't want to live that way. And two, I I don't need anything, you know, I don't need any help feeling anxious. (laughs) Oh yeah. I already do a fine job on my own. (laughs) Um, and you know, this week also, um, uh, and this kind of goes into the Wednesday thing, which was, I found out on Wednesday, I've talked about this in a, a long time ago about how I, I was applying for disability to kind of help me get back on my feet financially until I could go back to work. And, um, you know, I, my appeal got declined and, uh, it was weird because, you know, on one hand I was really down because I was really hoping it would go through. And, you know, and it's still mind boggling because my, you know, my attorney was like, this is a open and shut case. And clearly I guess it wasn't so, or it was just not in my favor, apparently. Um, but you know, so I was really down about it and I was just, you know, like I was starting to get into my own head and I was like, you know what, I'm going to text Tony and see if he wants to like go out and have a couple drinks, not to not to drink to forget, but just, you know, we're just going to hit the bar, have a couple drinks. No, you know, not get drunk or anything like that. And, um, because, you know, Tony's really good about pulling me out of my own head as well as, um, you know, I, I felt positive lately. I didn't want to take that step back, you know, and I saw Mm -hmm. it and I felt that I was going to, like, I could feel like I was sliding, you know, and I was like, I have to stop this. So I did that and then <laughs> we went to a, a, a bar and, uh, I completely forgot that I was supposed to podcast because <laughs> I lost track of what day it was. Again, not because I was drunk, just because I'm terrible at remembering things. Um, so I remembered it. I think we were supposed to record at what, like nine or nine 30. I think I texted you at like 10. I was like, Ugh. yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I'm very sorry about that. It was, yeah. And you, was, it was funny because I really was like, you know, I bet Brian's out either, you know, doing karaoke night or hanging out with Tony or something like that and, and just forgot about it. And then when you, you know, when you messaged me, I was like, Oh, cool. No problem. Yeah. And that was, you know, it was great that, you know, it didn't, uh, I'm glad it didn't, uh, like you didn't set that time for it and, you know, put something like a group off or something like that. So I, you know, cause then I would have felt really bad. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so it, it was, Really, (laughs) it's funny because it was kind of, you know, it was exactly what I needed. We went out, you know, I talked to Tony for a little bit about it and stuff. And, you know, you know, my mood was pretty good, you know, until the Cleveland Indians lost and were eliminated from the playoffs that night. (laughs) Then I was like, you know, but that's not like throwing me into depression sad. That's just, dang it, you know, (laughs) like (laughs) just sadness because your team lost, whatever. Um, But it's so weird because... You know, I've been talking over the last few weeks how I kind of feel like I'm close to being in a place of action, you know, versus just standing still. And now this me getting this decision does two things. One, it takes the handcuffs off of me because mm. I've not moved forward because I've been waiting on this, you know. So on one hand, it's that. But what it also does is <laughs> it takes away my excuse for not moving forward. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so now if I don't move forward, it's not because I'm waiting on some decision. It's because, you know, I'm just not moving forward, but it, it's a really kind of rough place to be because I really have no idea like what to do or what I want to do here, you know, and that's, that is not a comfortable place to be, especially at 39 years old. You know, if I was coming out of high school, meh, whatever, you know? Yeah. But at this age, it's like, yeah, I don't know what the hell I want to do with my life. And, you know, it really is bothering me. So I've been in my head the last few days because of it, you know, trying to figure out like, well, what can you do? What can this, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's been tough. Um, but I honestly think this is for the best. Not that I got turned down, but that I have a decision, you know, now, mm. cause if I had gotten it fine, then I could have, you know, I would have it, it, like the same thing. If I would have gotten it, at this point, I'd be like, okay, well, what am I going to do next? You know, like now that this has happened, what's the next step? And it's basically, I'm doing the same thing. It's just, unfortunately, you know, the different direction. 
So, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll f- I'm sure I'll figure something out. So, that this is like the final, that's all you can do. I, the only thing you could do now would be to start the process over from the beginning. I believe so. I haven't talked to my lawyer yet. I put a call into her, but I haven't talked to her yet. Mm. But I, I'm pretty sure. That's the way the letter read was that basically it's like, oh, you know, if you want to file a new claim, you can. And Gotcha. Yeah. I'll be honest. I just don't know if emotionally I want to do it again. You know? It's, it's so much paperwork. So much sitting in doctor's offices, dealing with stuff that just drives me crazy. You know, it basically, all it is, is it, it, it it's a huge anxiety festival, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it, it's, it's, yeah. So, you know, that is an option and that is something that, you know, I could do. And like I said, I'll, I'll talk to my lawyer cause you know, maybe if she's like, Hey, I really think you should, you know, do this, then maybe I will. But otherwise I'm, I'm probably at the end of it. And, you know, I'm, like I said, I just, it's too emotionally exhausting that I honestly think I'd rather put energy into doing something, you know, moving forward, basically, Mm -hmm. you know, at this point, than than to put it into another, at least year of doing this, you know? Yeah. And at least like when you, when you started this process, you weren't in the place you are today. Right. Yeah. I was in a much different place. Yeah, and this has to, that has to play into it to some degree. Yeah, you know, I think that's the thing. If my, my mindset was the way it was when I went in, this really would have bothered me. You know, like I'm pretty sure this would have been a week of staying in bed and that kind of thing. But because I've moved past it, like I said, the first thing I noticed was after a couple hours, I was like, I'm moving backwards. Like my, you know, I'm sliding backwards. I need to stop this now. You know, so I recognized it basically as it was happening, put something into motion to stop it. You know, even though it was just that one night, it was still, you know, it was just what I needed right then. Because it was, you know, you kind of start looking at it from the other side a little more when you get out of the negative mindset, you know. Yep. And, you know, that was like what Tony said, you know, at one point he's like, well, at least you got an answer. You know, and I was like, yeah, exactly. I, I, you know. Now I just have to figure out what, what the next plan is, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's just basically, yeah, it's basically, you know, you, that's, yeah, it all makes sense. Everything makes sense based on where you, where you seem to be at these days. Yeah. You know, the fact that your, your reaction is to go, okay, yeah, this is something that could really slide me back. I'm going to go out and be social. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yep. I'm going to go talk to somebody. I'm going to hang out with my friends because that makes me feel better. Yep. That's a different mindset than when you started this whole process. Yeah, exactly. Thinking, I, I can't do anything. Yep. You know, but look, now you can do something. Yep. That's that's different. And that'll, at least now you can, like you said, now you can go, well, time to marinate on it for a little while yeah. and figure out what the next indicated thing is. Yeah, exactly. You know, it really what it does is it, it pushes me to the brink of action, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, because even doing nothing at this point is an action because I'm going to move yeah. backwards. <laughs> you know, that's kind of the thing. It's like if I don't move forwards here after, you know, like you said, you get me give myself some time to think about stuff a reasonable amount of time. But then after that, then it's, then you're starting to hide behind excuses or finding reasons to not this or not do this, you know, and then that's where you start backsliding. And, you know, that's, that's the goal is to not go to that point. I want to move forward, not backwards at all, if I can help it. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's, yeah. So, you know, my win for the week is really the, um, being able to recognize, um, that I was starting to go down that hill. You know, and, and yeah. putting the brakes on. So, yeah, that's a huge win. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really is, and that's why I said, you know, on one hand, it 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 does really feel good to have an answer. You know, now I'm not going, man. I wish yeah. I would just get an answer. You know, which I've been yeah. doing for like six months. You know, like come on. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I and I totally know that feel. That 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 place can be a, as crippling mm-hmm. as what makes you start the process. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was getting at is it really was because it's like, well, 
I'm not going to go look for a job or think about that if I'm yeah. filing for disability at the moment because I wanted to do that so I could focus on getting my head right so that I could go back to work or whatever. And, you know, it, it you know, so like I said, it, it just pretty much kind of handcuffed me until it was over. Now it's over. So now it's over. Yeah. You know, now I just got to figure out what the heck I'm going to do. So, yeah, if anyone listening is, like, super rich and just wants to give me money, I'm more than willing to accept. <laughs> Brian is open for sponsorship. Yes, that's true. No tattoos, though. <laughs> I'm not going to give somebody else that power. <laughs> Unless the money's really good. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with some awful tattoos. I'm going to be like Steve-O, mm. you know? Some of the terrible tattoos he has. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so there we go. That's That's been my week. So, yeah, it's been all right. It really, it really hasn't been a bad week. There was a bad day, and yeah, uh, I've bounced back from it pretty well, I think, which is great because again, not something a, a couple years ago that I would have been able to do as easily. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know, this actually the topic that it, uh, I wanted to talk about tonight. It's really interesting how this kind of um, this has something to do with it. But it also has a lot to do with, like, my depression and whatnot, which is we're going to talk about the subject of the tortured artist. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start right from the beginning and say that this is not going to be one of those where I'm going to give you both sides of an argument. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty well set on the side of that I don't like um, romanticizing the idea and I think it's something that needs to change. I think artists need to not see it as a benefit. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, if you look over the years, there's been plenty of things that have been creative, creatively done um, when people are in a, a good mood or a good place or whatever, you know. And it's like for every breakup song, there's love songs, you know, that kind of thing. So, and I don't think most love songs are being written, you know positive love songs i shouldn't say <laughs> yeah um but anyway the way this applied to me was years ago um i like when i first was kind of reading about depression i didn't want to go to a doctor because i was afraid they'd put me on a pill and i was afraid that the pill that they put me on would take my edge away you know, it would take away my creativity or my sense of humor or whatever, you know, things that I really felt were me, um, you know, and same with therapy. I didn't want to go into therapy because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want them to basically dismantle my, um, um, my self-deprecating humor or those kind of things, you know. So I lived in a place of the tortured artist concept for a long, long time. Because I thought it was going to take my edge away. I thought it was going to make me worse as a creative person. Until there's a, an online comic called Penny Arcade. And one of the guys uh, that does that strip, or online comic, whatever, uh, he has issues with, um, I don't remember if it's depression and anxiety or if it's just anxiety or whatever. But he posted a blog about ex that exact same thing about how as a creative person he was afraid he'd lose his edge, you know, and that kind of thing, which I've since found out is a very common feeling amongst creative people who have a mental illness also, um, that you're afraid you're going to not be the same person. And he basically was like, I've been on, I don't know what pill it was, but he had been on an antidepressant for like a decent amount of time. And he's like, I can honestly tell you it hasn't affected my creativity at all. You know, he's like, if anything, it helps because now I feel like doing the work, you know, and that's more like me. Like for the longest time, I wouldn't care about drawing because I just, I, yeah, I didn't care about getting out of bed, you know? So while you're feeling that way, it's hard to be very creative. Um, so yeah, this is when he did that though, that's kind of when I hit that point of, that was kind of my first aha moment when it came to that I need to get help. Um, 
aside from, you know, there was more major things, but that was one where I think that was where my brain started becoming receptive to the idea of getting help because I saw someone else who was creative and he went through it and he was fine. Mm, okay. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> so it's like, okay, well, yeah, you know, okay, this works. Yeah. yeah. And that makes a difference. Oh, definitely. You know, yeah, because because until I mean that was my whole thing. Like with when it came to alcoholism, I knew nobody. Like I honestly, I, I knew nobody in recovery. Oh wow! And, and so I, there was never even a there was not even an example, right? You know, or someone to look look towards. You know, mm. or let's just say there was one or two examples, but not exactly anyone that I aspired to become. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But it's really, there's like, oh, wow, you, you, you were able to do this. Okay. Maybe I can do this too. I had none of that. Yeah. And totally get it. Yep. And that's why I said it, it was really important that I saw not just another person doing it, but somebody who's successful, you know, like they put up a new comic, I think every week or every other week, something like that. So, you know, it's, this is not something to where, he just puts one up, you know, once a month or just, he's just doing it for some random fun. This is like their livelihood, you know, it's that strip and then other things they do because that strip got so popular or online comic. Well, I, I keep calling it a strip because it's, it's presented in a comic strip style. Oh, um, cool. you know, so, you know, not only seeing somebody succeed, but seeing someone successful succeed, you know, made it go, okay, this is very doable because that guy is busy all the time and he's got to stay on top of his his artwork because if he doesn't then the strip doesn't go up on time and that affects their money and you know like he's got a pretty good responsibility on him so there was that and that's kind of around the same time where i started kind of developing the thought process of of how i looked at this because you know we've got a couple articles i want to talk about a little bit here but right before i get into it it's uh, you know i Obviously, anyone who knows anything about art knows the Van Gogh story, you know, that he cut his ear off. And if you don't know, Van Gogh suffered from depression. You know, he painted like Starry Night while he was in his uh, very, in a very depressed state. And, um, you know, so, and, <laughs> you know, that's one of my favorite paintings. So it, it's, it's something to look at and go, wow, you know, he did this while he was that way. Um, but, I, the idea of, um, of that just as it bothers me because I've seen people depressed and create artwork and I've seen the same person, uh, under treatment, create artwork and the quality level is usually the same or better once they get treatment. Because again, you feel like doing the work. Now it might not be like if you were doing really dark work before, maybe you're not going to do that kind of stuff now. Um, but you know, look at music. You know, Metallica is not writing the same music or for a long time. They wouldn't write or whoever your favorite band is. They don't write the same album generally every time. You know, they change over time because that's not who they are anymore. You know, like really Jay-Z shouldn't be talking about slinging drugs on the street anymore. Yeah. <laughs> He's so far removed from that now, you know? So, yeah. And that's, that's one of those weird, the, when I was young, I realized quite early on that artists changed at some point. Yeah. Yeah. You, you'd like, well, the first example I had was, I remember, uh, David Crosby from Crosby, Stills and Nash put out a solo album and I was like, <laughs> yeah, what is this? I mean, it was horrible. Mm. And, you know, and this, you, sp you especially see it a lot with artists that suddenly find, you know, that they themselves find recovery. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden their songs are about that. Yeah. But they're not the same. Yep. Like, they're, they're, the lyrics are not as creative. Oh, yeah. And they're more literal and narrative rather than, you know. Yeah poetic and artistic <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah and you know and i'll openly say like i it isn't that i dismiss that the tortured artist exists i 100 percent believe that it does and that you know there is creativity in pain but that's not the only place that there's creativity 
Exactly. And that's where the line needs to be drawn, in my opinion. Um, because if you teach people that, like, there are people who draw really dark, gruesome scenes for, like, comic books and all this that are not suffering from depression or, or this other stuff, you know, that are just normal people. They just have, you know, they love horror movies. They love drawing, you know, stuff like that. So that's what they do. But there's also going to be people who use the darkness they're feeling to fuel what they're doing. And, you know, as we're going to get into here now, um, you know, that becomes a really kind of dangerous process. Um, cause <laughs> you're, you're feeding the, it's the snake eating its own tail, you know? Um, yeah, because you know, you create dark things and then you, well, I got to think dark to do this. And the only way to think dark is to stay depressed. And you know, you just keep feeding the cycle there. Um, I don't know which one I want to talk about first. We've got two articles here. Well, it's funny is when you sent me the articles and I first just, you know, just saw them and I saw the name Ren. I'm like, Oh, MC Ren. (laughs) <laughs> like oh no, it's no not, it, it is interesting it's not about nwa <laughs> no 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 it is interesting you pointed out uh from reading both of them that it does <laughs> both uh articles i have actually reference uh the same photographer which is kind of funny um but you know a lot of people know about this from you know kurt cobain dying or whatever is that you know when you look back at his life, you go, wow, he was tortured. He was, you know, dealing with his mental illnesses and stuff. And I think a lot of it, like I said, is I'm, I'm, I want it to not be romanticized and I want us to have the dialogues about the mental illness that need to be had, you know, so people can get help because existing in this world, like in the mental illness without help is dangerous and it, it's not good for you, you know? So, um, but anyways, this first one here, I guess, I'll go with the one from Vice, I guess. Uh, they point out, um, that there was a study, an Icelandic study in 2015 that found that, uh, 25% of creative people are more susceptible to bipolar or schizophrenia due to specific genes they carried. Writers were 121% more likely to live with bipolar disorder and 50% more likely to take their own lives. But as it points out in here, uh, but the rest of the scientific community is also quick to point out that you can't necessarily measure this because of genetics. You, you know, because each person is built differently. So it's not necessarily the same across the board for, you know, uh, just because you're creative, but if there, you know, if there's a history of mental illness in your, uh, family, you would be more likely to have it walking in. It would have nothing to do with being creative, you know, that kind of a thing. Yeah. So, you know, it, it is a little tough. This is a hard thing to quantify for, um, you know, for those kind of reasons. Um, where was it? I forgot what I was reading. Uh, shoot. Um, but yeah, this, uh, <laughs> wow. It says a happiness researcher. <laughs> wow. It, it says, yes, it's a real job, which I didn't know that was a real job. And Harvard lecturer Sean Acker has made a career out of the study and pursuit of glowing emotions. He seeks to show that we're at our most creative when we're happy. Speaking to Inc., um, he explained that in his research he's found we're in an optimistic frame of mind. Our brain is able to perceive more possibilities. When researchers from the University of California, San Francisco, performed scans of brains of jazz musicians while they played, they found that the parts of their brain that controlled creativity were more active when they looked at images that brought them joy. Which, see, that makes perfect sense to me. Because like I had mentioned already, it's like if you're if you're depressed or you're down, you don't feel like doing things. You don't feel like creating. You don't feel like whatever. So it would it makes a lot of sense to me that you would feel more like doing things or more creative when you're feeling good. You know? Cause I think it works very similarly to anything like, you know, you don't feel like cleaning your house when you're in a bad mood or depressed, you know, some people do. I don't want to say everybody. Um, yeah. But it's so weird to think about like, all right. Like everything so far, they talk about the studies make sense. Yeah. Maybe it's a little astonishing that, you know, 
whatever that was, 125% of your yeah, kind right. of numbers is yeah. like, okay, that's that's pretty big. And yeah. 50%, <laughs> you yeah. know, kill themselves. Yeah, those are big okay. numbers, yeah. Right, those, right, those are substantial. But like everything that they just talked about, the study with the jazz and all that, I'm like, okay, that's, it makes total sense to me. But as an artist who has done good work, or I wouldn't necessarily say good work, but let's call it prolific work. Yeah. While in a state of being down in, you know, angst ridden, let's just call it. Yeah. You know, in that kind of a place, it's hard to agree with it, right? Yep. Because back then, I thought that was the only way. Yep, me too. I could create. Mm hmm. So it's like now me goes, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But old me would be like, no. Yeah. You know, not possible because there's just such a con- – there'd be such a confirmation bias because then I don't think about those long periods of time that went by that nothing happened. Right. Just like me right now, if I look back at my life and I go, when was the most creative point of my life? It would be high school through – um my two years of college or almost three years of college. And then a couple years after that, that's when I was doing most of my artistic work. Right. Well, I was very depressed during that time, not seeking any sort of help, but I can't Im- immediately go, Oh, well there's the cause because when I stopped drawing and such, there's still a bunch of years where I, you know, I, I didn't do anything. So even arguing that creativity comes from those kind of things, it's like, well, explain the rest of these years for me then. You know, like I was yeah. depressed all that time and nothing, I wasn't putting pencil to paper at all. So what's going on here? You know, so it's why I said, and it says in here even that it's hard to kind of prove this one way or other or another. And, um, <clears throat> but that it points out, um, again, that this can be dangerous behavior. Um, you know, because, uh, where is it? I forgot what it said. So, so while we must be careful to not flatten such an incredibly enigmatic concept, we still need to recognize that celebrating any form of pain threatens to act as another barrier in people seeking or being offered help. Now, think of it this way also. For years and years and years in sports, no matter how bad the injury was, unless it was like your leg was pointing the wrong way kind of a thing, they would basically be like, take some aspirin and get back in there. You know, the attitude was because if you don't, you lose, you're going to lose your spot. And for years and years and years, guys would get concussions and, or their bell rung, as they called it. And uh, now we're looking at that going, whoo, you know, instead of looking back at those guys as, man, they were manly and brave and all this. It's like, whoo, now it's like, well, we have all this knowledge. So now you're not called manly if you get a concussion and try to go back on the field. You know, now it's stupid, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and I'm not saying that, you know, creating while you're hurting is, is stupid, but it's the same, you know, it's kind of in that area that by romanticizing it or, or thinking that you have to be in that area, it prevents you or, or, stu- you know, uh, stops you from seeking help. Because like I said, with me, you know, I was afraid I'd lose my, my creative edge, you know? Well, it, like let's let's take the sports analogy. You know, it's really it's 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 really quite easy for us to to now look at somebody and and go, okay, wow, you were unbelievable, but look what you were shooting into your leg yeah. to keep you running, and now you're arthritic and blah 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 and this and that, and you're like, ooh, you know, or the steroids or whatever it is. We can do the same thing with an artist. When you, you know, when they finally, when something finally tragic happens and you found, and you find out that the reason that they were able to do what they did was because they constantly kept themselves on, you know, they were, they were shooting heroin yeah. or they were not taking medications, um, or they would at certain times and then they would stop. Yep. Which is, um, because they felt that that was the only way they could be creative. Right. And then when you find that, wouldn't you know? I'd feel the same way. I'd be like, "Oh wow, that it wasn't worth losing your life." Right. Well, I remember Metallica talking in that uh, what is it, the Saint Anger video? I think it is like the the movie uh, document documentary about Saint Anger, not the album. Um, but they were talking about like James Hetfield's talking about how you know when he got sober, it, it was the first time he'd written lyrics or music in what twenty thirty years sober. You know, 
that he had been an alcoholic this whole time. And now it's, you know, he had, like you, you've said on here too, you know, how you have to learn to do things again, you know, but he could, you know, he didn't say, oh, I wasn't creative at all. He was just like, you know, now he was coming from it from a positive place and whether or not you like saying anger or whatever, but it was an album written about him getting clean, you know, and, or them getting clean, whatever. And, uh, you know, so he took his, his current gratitude, his place that he was at that point and, and wrote his lyrics. He was still able to create after he had sought help, you know? And again, I know you can, well, it's not as good as the old stuff or what, but it's still the idea that he still was able to create, you know? And since then he's gotten better. Yeah. Because he's actually practiced it. And right. I think that's the, the well, real, and if you listen to him on podcasts and stuff, he sounds really in a good place. You know, he sounds happy. Well, yeah, he sounds right. like life is great because like, his right. life is great. That's a, yep. That's, and this is, this is, this is the real, for, for those people that do glorify the, 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 you know, this type of artistry. Yeah. The, the angst ridden artist, the, for, for anybody that glorifies that or wants to glorify it, if you had an opportunity to talk to a person that was miserable, uh, you know, or disoriented, or maybe a little, you know, just not in the right place, mm-hmm. versus talking to th- that same person and they're happy. Yeah. They feel good about where they are in life. That, you know, like, which would you rather have for a person? Yep. Well, think about, over the last few years, you know, as we've mourned the loss of like Chester Bennington, um, uh, Chris Cornell, Scott Weiland, going back even to, you know, like Kurt Cobain, um, Lane Staley, you know, any of, um, that kind of situation to where they're all at some point either had mental illness or a drug situation or something in there. And it's like, would you, we all were so sad when each of them died, but it's like, would you take their body of, of work and say, oh, well, he could continue to make that body of work, but he's going to be miserable or would you rather have, and, but, or he's dead, but, or have him put out new stuff, but he's alive. You know, it's like in my, I'd rather have the person live than, you know, and not eat, maybe know. even never be creative again. Exactly. I, I would just, but at, but at yeah. least your friend is alive still. Exactly. And, and that's, that's kind of where I am with this is that it kind of also reminds me sometimes you'll hear when someone gets clean or, or gets medicated or, or treated, I should say, not just Medicaid, but treatment for like a mental illness is that you'll hear their friends go, Oh, I like the old, old you better. The old you was more fun, you know? Oh yeah. And we've talked about that on here, I think before. And it's like, yeah, but I was killing myself. I was miserable. Yeah. You want that just so you can, you know, it's like, that's incredibly selfish. You know? Yeah. yeah. You were, you were fine with the, with the, the, the silly drunk me until I became a, but <laughs> you know? right yeah and then you didn't like it did you yeah exactly you, you know and neither did i yeah you know? exactly but, yeah but and that's that i hear that all the time especially with younger people who have to go hang out with their friends and now they're sober and they're like, yeah you're not as much fun as you used to be yeah. and it's like oh yeah that's just because i don't make an idiot of myself every night for your entertainment <laughs> right, exactly that's exactly what it is you know and yeah it, yeah and and just that that you know, it's, it's, it's easy for us to talk about it now, where we are in our lives, you know, our ages, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. When you put, so you got some years behind you. Yeah. But, you know, if I was 20 something, I'd have a totally different mindset oh, for because sure. yep. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, you, things are just different then. Yeah. Your perspective is completely different. And, you know, everything that I'm going to talk about tonight is it has is based on nothing scientific is based on yeah. nothing that that that's been studied it's purely anecdotal evidence and it's as good as it's as good as me saying it's my experience right you know but like my experience is i have a friend who was an amazing artist and he has struggled with some sort of mental illness undiagnosed maybe diagnosed who knows I don't know, but I used to play music with him. He used to be, ama- you know, uh, unbelievable. I-, I don't even talk to him anymore. Yeah. I can't. He he will not talk any longer, and he is he is he is in a hole 
of what I, I don't know what it could be mental illness. I, I you know I hear he drinks a lot. Um, my friends have been with him, and it was just horrible. It was just a lot of drinking and then dysfunction. Yeah, and it's 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 just not worth it. You know, the, I think a lot of these. You know that that's the once again anecdotally, those numbers do not surprise me because I think of that number twenty seven with musicians, Janis yep, Joplin, yep. <laughs> Jim Morrison. I mean, go down the list yep. of this, but it, you know, it's not it has nothing to do with that number, but it has to do with a certain amount of time that a person gets that they can kill themselves. Yeah. And well, and I also think that the 27 thing where I think it's really relevant to what you're saying is going back a, a minute to where you pointed out that if you were in your 20s, you'd have a different mindset. That's what that mindset yeah. gets you sometimes, you know, well, yeah, because you're you you're, feel invincible. You're like, yeah, you feel invincible. And then and then in the case of these these, you know, rock stars, they get some money. Yep. There's nothing to, to stop them. This has worked for them so far. Why would I stop? Next thing you know, you've drunk yourself to death, heroin overdose, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, and in some cases, put a shotgun in your face. Yeah. And, and the, the bummer about it is, is, I, you know, that, then I reflect on, you know, so my, my buddy, Eddie, you know, I just, it absolutely, it, it's, it's one of the greatest heartbreaks of my life because, yeah. You know, I got to be with, I got to, I got to basically make art with a genius. I mean, it really is that amazing. But it went on for too long and he lost it. And I, and I, and I, it makes me think of other artists who, who, who find that. And we're talking, I'm not talking, I'm talking, you know, like authors going, you know, Edgar Allan Poe level where they were yeah. like, okay, you know, they kept themselves on a certain level of opium, yeah. you know, all the time because this was their, this is where their creativity was. Right. Hemingway was constantly drunk, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, and granted now they were self-medicating there. We didn't have the science we have today, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. so let's just accept that this is, this has kind of been a commonality and the study backs it up you know, with, with some numbers. But the, the one thing that I, that I keep thinking about is when we learn to do our art, whatever it is, it tends to be in those, you know, those, those, er, those teen years. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're learning, but most of it is happening off of pure passion. Yeah. And you're also developing your view of the world. So like, you know, from the art perspective, you might start becoming more or, or music, you know, whatever you might start becoming more political in your work, or you might start going after like adult, you know, big time issues rather than just drawing to draw or, you know, Oh, I'm going to draw still life. Maybe now you're, you know, uh, using your art for, uh, you know, whatever it is, but you're, you're starting to look for a message in what you're doing. Yeah. You know, and, but you're, and even though you are training, and you're learning and you've got, <clears throat> excuse me, skills, there's, there's still just a lot of passion, meaning that yep. you do your art in whatever mindset that you have. Exactly. Yeah. And what, what happens is, is let's say at, at, from that point on, you run with that and that becomes your method. Like you, you don't, you don't further that education. You go completely off of instinct. Then you, that's all you know how to do. Yeah. You're never forced to, to do it in a different frame of mind. Yeah. And then that could be, I can, I can see how then all of a sudden that gets frustrating when your trick, whatever that is, doesn't work. Whether it was like, oh, I always wrote the best when, you know, when girls broke up with me. Yeah. You know, so I tend to be a <laughs> jerk, you know, or, yeah. you know, I do, dr and I've heard this over and over again where, you know, young people discovered alcohol or, or weed or whatever it is. And that's their method. And then one day it stops working because inevitably it does stop working. We can't yeah. live in that, right. that one sided. I mean, there's, it's finite. Yeah. So then you have to learn something else. Now, a lot of people, when you end up in, in, at a university or at some sort of college, you have to be creative in the classroom. Yeah. You have to be creative as part of, and you have to make it happen. And if you can't, you know, then, that could be equally as bad 
but that's the, at least there's a place where people finally learn like, okay, wow, you know, I, I, I can't just be in this one frame of mind. Right. What, when the, I can give you a great example of this, which was in high school, I was in commercial art and a lot of, uh, the projects and stuff we had, I would do like a day before they were due, you know, and I'd still, yeah. cr- I'd still crush them. Like I'd still get A's on stuff, but I'd do it like the day that before they were due. I get into college and the first time I tried that, I fell on my face. And, you know, I tried it a few other times and most of the time it didn't go well for me because, you know, there's no, there's no give in college. You know, if you make a mistake, they're not going, okay, you can turn it in tomorrow. You know, that's not there generally. Um, but also, like you said, the work and stuff that they're giving you is meant to make you be creative now. You know, which sucks for some people like me. I had art classes at like nine in the morning. I'm terrible at nine in the morning. It doesn't matter what you want me to do unless it's sleep. That's about the best thing I can do at 9 a.m. <laughs> you know, I would much rather like if I had the option to go to school overnight, I, sh- I certainly would have, you know, because that's when I felt more creative. I was awake and all this. And, uh, you know, so I had to find ways like you were saying, I had to find ways to get out of my last minute mindset out of my, I'll do it, you know, after five o'clock mindset. And, you know, because there were, there were times we were, we'd sit in class and, you know, it's a three hour class and the teacher's like, here's the assignment. I want 25 to 35 or something thumbnails by the end of the class, you know, and you've got to do that work. Cause if you don't, you, you know, that reflects against your, you know, uh, or on your grade. So, you know, I, I, I totally saw, what you were just talking about you know yeah and it's 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 it was something that i i learned early too is that i was also one of these people that tended to become more prolific when i was down or when i was in in a in a in a rough patch and then when i wasn't i had a hard time you know yeah doing art you know what's really interesting to me about this too is, is especially from the mindset i'm in now um Looking back at that stuff, it's like the reason I think I was more prolific and that I, you know, did so much more art when I was really depressed was because I had nothing else to do. When you're in a good mood, you tend to want to socialize. You generally, you know, look for things to do kind of a thing. So there's an element of that in there too. I totally agree with that. That's true. You know, yeah. I wouldn't want to sit around drawing depressing art or writing depressing poetry or something like that. If I'm in a good mood, because I'll be like, Hey, let's go do something, you know, and like, let's go enjoy life. I don't want to do this. You know, I use my art and stuff as a, an outlet for it, for that stuff. It's it's like, I need this out of me, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Cause you're, you're basically stuck inside your head. Yeah. You're running around in a dark neighborhood Mm -hmm. and, (laughs) and that's why, you know, if, if that is, if that is your regular state, and for some people, it is. Yeah, it is. They can't escape their brains, so they become very prolific writers. And the 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 one thing that I keep coming back to is, and you practice a lot. Yep. So you get really good. That doesn't mean you can't practice a lot at something else and also be good. Right. However, the hard part is when all of a sudden, and and I, I it was a. Uh, it was an interview with a musician that had that had kicked heroin, and he was a, an amazing writer. And here he is; he's sober, and he had to write music again, or he wanted to. He wanted to put out an album, and he literally was like, I, "You know, it goes back to that James Hetfield conversation. Like, okay, what? How do I do this? Yeah, you know. And a lot of people who in, he, a lot of artists that he knew that had the same thing, they just stopped. They gave up because they lost it. But he was determined. He looked at it from the standpoint of practice. Yeah. I spent years and years and years and years learning how to write in this frame of mind. Well, I'm in a new frame of mind. So I'm, I'm going to have to spend some time learning to do it this way. Yeah, your perspective changed. And that's what changed. he did. Yeah, exactly. Your perspective yeah. changed. So you go, okay, well, like I, I mentioned with Hetfield, it was the same thing. You know, it's like he was in a positive set. was like, hey, I, you know, I'm, I can now look back at – the monster that was inside of me, you know, that was the alcoholism or is inside me, however you want to, you know, and, uh, you know, and I can write about it now. Whereas when you're in the the mouth of the beast, it's hard to, uh, have any perspective, you know? So it's, yeah. that makes total sense. And, you know, I, I get it with art 
And again, when we say art, I think Heno and I both are pretty much meaning anything art, art related. Exactly. Writing, music, you know, fine Doesn't arts, matter. any of it, performing, whatever it is. Performance art, yep. Yeah. Um, is, you know, when, when you, when you start leaning, like Heno was saying, it's like when you start leaning on the crutch of having to be depressed or having to have a substance in order to feel creative, you know, you, you really aren't, really what you're doing is, you're almost looking for a shortcut in that if you put the work in, like you said, it's like, look, to draw, it takes practice to be any good at it. Doesn't matter, you know, unless you're some weird phenomenon, you know, <laughs> you've got to put in hours of work to get good. So like you said, it's like, well, if you get treatment or you get clean and you're like, well, I don't know, you know, normally I'd be, you know, knocking back half a bottle of booze or I'd be this, or you know, it's like, well, now it's like you're still doing the work. Like sit down and do the exact same work that you would have done before. Get yourself into the practice of drawing, writing music, whatever it is. And it may not be the same, but it shouldn't be the same because you're not the same person. You know, you're altering whether it's, you know, chemically via an antidepressant or just mentally via therapy or, you know, having, you know, having um, um, gotten over an addiction kind of a thing. You know, it's like you – it's just so much of a better way to look at it and just say, I can do this again. You just have to find it. And look, I'm, I'm as bad as anybody. I've had the hardest time trying to be creative, you know, but I had somebody point out to me, it's like, well, you know what? You do podcasts, you write a bunch of stuff on Twitter. You know, it's like, you're still creative. You're just not creative in the same way because you're different, you know? So, you know, there, there's that element too, is, you know, you may also be just overlooking ways that you're being creative in other ways. So well, that's a, you, that's you a know. great observation because that's, that's kind of what, what hit me was for, you know, for writing music, like the early stuff that I wrote that I tried to be very like positive or upbeat on yeah. was pretty much garbage. Uh, but you know, Anything that I started with when it was new wasn't great, and it took some practice, and it got better, and it got better, and it got better, but I still, it wasn't quite the same yet, and then eventually, I learned new ways of doing, you know, like new ways of, of, of writing music, yeah. new ways of, of, of being creative, and, and the, the wildest one was, you know, speaking of podcasts, was going, okay, you know, it was one thing to be inspired and write a you know a, a song for a podcast for something. Yeah. It was another thing to to sit down and say, okay, create. Yeah. Because I'm not that type of person. I'm there's I know lots of I know plenty of artists that will write thirty songs and pick the nine best for an album. Yeah, exactly. And the next album, they won't even go back to the the throwaways. They'll write thirty more songs. Yeah. And pick the nine best. That's not me. Never been that way. I'm not that prolific. Yeah. You know, I tend to go by inspiration. However, I wanted to become a better creator on, on demand. And it wasn't easy. No, but it's boy, not. when I, no. And, but when I, when I finally, when I was finally able to do it and I learned how to do it, it became one of the most satisfying things ever in the world. And I went, wow, I just learned something new. Yeah. And I can see why an artist, because we tend to be a little moody and emotional, mm -hmm. wouldn't want to do that. And especially if you got money, like this is why musicians, when they suddenly have a change in life, should really listen to other people <laughs> <laughs> and not put that album out yeah. that they want the world to know how I'm different. Because guess what? It's poop. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah. There's a lot of stuff. David that Crosby. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I'm being judgmental there, but there's a tr there's some truth to it. I'm sorry, but it's like just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. And m maybe you should listen to some people around you. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe a producer or two that says, "Okay, woo, let's um, let's uh, let's put this aside and do some more work." Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You know, something else too is that, um, and I, I argued this point with somebody once before on this topic, which is, I think, you know, if you want to be, um, a one trick pony in, in the art world, you can, you know, there's potential for you to be successful and be a one trick pony. Like you only do, 
a certain kind of, you know, song or a certain kind of artwork or, you know, photography, whatever. But the better artist, the better photographer, like all that, they're more well-rounded. And in order to be well-rounded, you have to have, you have to be able to have a different voice, essentially. You have to be able to change kind of who you are based on your project. You know, writing is the easiest one for me to use is that because each character you write is a different voice. You know, all your characters shouldn't have the same voice um, or perspective or whatever. That's why, you know, writers do a ton of research a lot of times to get inside the head of, you know, people who are going through or have gone through something. And I've always felt that way with art, too. Like when I was, you know, there's certain kinds of of uh, art that even though I was like, I don't like doing this, it's like I should still learn, you know, because you don't know when using an element of that might help you, you know, deliver the message you're trying to deliver in what you're doing or whatever. And I think only being the, the moody artist, I, I honestly think it grows tiresome on a lot of people too. Just like a lot of people don't want to be around a depressed person all the time because they're like, Oh, there's such a, you know, Debbie Downer or whatever. And I think the same thing with art is after a while, some people are like, yeah, we get it. You don't like this, you know, what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like I said, there's plenty of room if you want to be a one trick pony, but I don't, that's not what I wanted to be. I wanted to be more well-rounded. I didn't want to be pigeonholed in, oh, I can only draw if I have pain because that means I have to bring pain into my life. You know, like I have to seek pain essentially or, or bring in extra pain because you know, I need to stay creative. I have to keep, you know, getting a score basically. And that's, it's just not a good way to be to me. Even if you do turn out the greatest art of all time, I'd rather just not turn out art, you know, as much as it pain would pain me. I'd just rather turn nothing out and be happy or at least be, you know, happy ish. Yeah, exactly. And the, you know, the, the one main point that we're talking about here is, Really, we're, we're, I mean, Brian and I both agree that it's very romantic, but it becomes dangerous. Yeah. I mean, it just flat out does. There is nothing about it, you know, it, it doesn't matter what it is, really. It, it, if you're, if you're using, using a substance, if you're using, an imbalance in your life in any way mm -hmm. as your, as your, as your muse, it eventually you're going to lose control of it. Right. You know, you, you know, look at Hunter S Thompson. There's a great example, <laughs> you know, a guy yeah. who medicated like crazy and, and did things that were very, you know, uh, dangerous to and around himself you know, and you can look at the things he's he's written and, you know, feel how you want to feel about him. Uh, but he's dead. You know, he, he died and his lifestyle is what, you know, essentially leads to that kind of thing. So, you know, it's a, I don't know. I, I just wouldn't – like you said, it, it romanticizing this is dangerous because it, it doesn't allow you to truly look at the fact that you have a problem because you're going to see it as a strength. And that's the problem, <laughs> you know, um, because it, it's not, you know, like I said, if you keep welcoming in, it, it's going to work like an addiction in that you're going to need more and more and more, you know, to, to fuel you. And at some point there's no more, you know, at some point it's stick your head in the oven and, you know. And, uh, or something to that effect. And that's, that's what we, especially on this podcast, we, we don't want, we want people to be creative. We love creativity. Heno and I can't get enough of processes of creativity. We're geeks for it, but we also don't want people to be killing themselves or constantly miserable because they have to be, you know? Yeah. I, one thing that really was tough for me was watching the Amy Winehouse documentary. Oh Amy. yeah. <clears throat> and then reading in, he's a local music fan. He's a gigantic music fan, uh, a local guy. He supports local music. Um, he's an odd duck and he wrote a little article, it, you know, like an editorial 
where he started talking about alcoholism and drug addiction as a choice and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And it was just, it was, it, it oh boy, I had to respond. I mean, there was no way I was not going to respond to this. It was just disgusting yeah. because I watched that documentary and all, it's like, like you have no idea. <laughs> you know, it's like you have, you have no idea what you're talking about. Um, and it was crushing. I mean, it's an absolutely crushing documentary. If you want to be, you want to be, you know, if I think everyone that thinks that, that this, this type of artistry is, is romantic is go watch that documentary. Yeah, <laughs> you will really. not think so yeah. any longer. That's my thing too. And like the one that stood out in my head that, you know, really kind of forged this was, you know, reading so much stuff about, uh, Kurt Cobain. You know, when you start finding out about, all the, you know, issues he had in his own head, you know, and, and you're like, wow, you know, on one hand, this guy was putting out, you know, in the biggest band in the world almost, and, you know, putting out huge, you know, huge successful records and all this. And again, as we've talked before, you know, success does not equate happiness. So, you know, it's, and you're right, the Amy Hine, we have Hinehouse, Winehouse, (laughs) her story is, you know, even, yeah, that's a better example. It, it just is. It, it you know the, that documentary is a really good documentary for giving you that perspective. Yeah, you and know. it's it's you know that that if you can look at her, you can you'll see every other tortured artist that you've ever thought about for sure. They're they're, they're and they're tortured souls, and you you wish that. Th- they they could have gotten past it. Not everyone gets to. Some people do. Mm. Um, I, I wish more would. I think the main thing to get, to get from this is though is is this is another thing to look for in our friends and family. That if if you see someone heading down this road, and it's typically going to be somebody younger, mm-hmm. is you know that that to to find this early on and and to try to to you know. Whatever you can do to steer a person away from this ideal. Now, I loved. I mean, you know, I went. I went. I went through my Jim Morrison phase. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, Listen, like, Van Gogh is my favorite artist. You know, yeah. it's like <laughs> so. As you know, and he's known for you know a lot of his better stuff was done while he was really depressed. You know, but yeah, I, I don't know. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean that. The depression cre- was the reason, the catalyst for the creativity, or it could be that he was hurting, so he didn't want to go socialize, so he created. You know, so it's kind of there's there's different nuances in this that I think are very important. But whatever, it's still the idea that he was like you were saying. There's Jim Morrison who drank like crazy. You know, all these other examples we've given through here of of famous people that have you know been tortured artists. You know, and that's without the how many ever there have been that no one's ever heard of. Yeah, and that's and I think that's the 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 in. It's kind of interesting because it's like it, you're almost there's times, and I've said this a million times. There's a bunch of time. You know, I I had an opportunity to move down to Los Angeles with a friend of mine and go play music. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, because there's a part of me that thinks I would have ended up dead. Or let's just say my likelihood would have gotten up a lot, gone a lot higher for something bad to happen. Sure. I There's times in my life where I've been like, you know, I'm, I'm glad I never got a taste of fame. I'm glad because my addictive personality could have gotten me into a lot of trouble. I did not have a lot of integrity. I was the person that could be easily steered. And I'll tell you, if you're the cash cow and, and, and the people around you want to keep the party going, They'll keep your party going. Elvis is a great they, example of that. They, yeah. Until they've used you up and spit you out. Yeah, like I said, Elvis is a great example of that, you know. There's yeah. all sorts of documented stuff that he was, you know, basically that's what they did was keep him keep him to where he wouldn't break away from his management, you know. <clears throat> yeah. And and it's 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 sad and that's why you know there's a lot of people out there that have never had a taste of fame and in a lot of ways they're better off. Yeah, I agree with you. Um you know, and like I said a little bit ago, we're not we're not trying to say, you know, like if you're in a, a dark place and you feel like creating, by all means create. Like I said, I never want to stifle. Yeah, that, those are outlets. Yeah, I don't Important want anyone outlets. to not create. Um, but, I, you know, just make sure it's like if you see that you're creating because you're in pain, it's like 
see if there's a way you can get help for that also. I mean, I, I, I understand that maybe you're like, man, I haven't put out, you know, I haven't painted this good in years or I haven't, you know, it's like, or my music is better than it's ever been. And it's like, you can have that perspective outside of it. We've all gone through hurt, right? You can draw on that. Like, look at actors, you know, to cry on command. They have to pull on a past experience. They don't have to have someone punch them in the face right now so they can cry, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and I think you can do that a little bit with other creativity too, is you can kind of pull some of that stuff back and, you know, think about the worst time in your life. I mean, like right now, if somebody was like, yeah, I want you to really pull on that. And it's like, I'd be thinking about when my dad died, you know, and how, how hurt I was and just how whatever. And it's like, but I don't need to go through that again. I just pull from that remembering how down I was and whatever, you know? So it, There's that element that, you know, seeking help still can help you get clarity in your head to where you can maybe pick and choose that stuff from your memory rather than have to keep experiencing hurt in order to create, you know. And And I've had, I've had a a wonderful opportunity several times to help other artists and, you know, they may be, um, you know, a, uh, a different type of artist than I am, but I've been able to share my experience with with sobriety and learning new ways of doing things because they've also had that same thing where it's like, well, I used to drink wine all the time and now I don't. I'm having a hard time, yeah. you know. And it's like, okay, well, what did you do, you know? And I started talking about I kind of had to go back to school, yeah. you know. I and 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 it was it was like you're saying if if somebody is if somebody we always want people to get help. That want help. Yep. And if somebody is struggling, get the help. Your the the art, it'll be there. I guarantee it. Yeah. If 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 you are a creative person, the creativity is inside of you. You just it, you just need to find a new way yeah. to grab it. Right. A new route to latch onto it. But I know it's in there, and that's well, just from my own experience. Mine too, because I was creative before I was. I remember being depressed. You know. I've always been creative, like to the point that I was a little kid, I would always grab paper and I was drawing stuff, you know, making up characters and all this kind of stuff when I was a real little kid, you know, and then going through depression, I was, you know, or as I've gone through it, you know, I've been very creative and whatever, but there's a lot of the stuff that I've drawn that isn't, you know, like you wouldn't look at it and go, oh, wow, I bet he was depressed when he did that, you know? So, yeah, that's, you know what, that's a great point. You know, and that's the thing is you're, you're, you know, like you're in, you know, you're not, you weren't born with a bottle of booze in your hand, you know, like you eventually got to that point, but I'm sure, sure you were doing something creative before you drank, you know, it might not have been music. It might not have been something else, but there's probably somewhere that a person's showing it off, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think I'll, you know, <laughs> I want to have a I want to have a nice positive note on the end here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because it, it's it's a tough subject, yeah. Uh, and and you know, like like you started with, I I'm with you. I have a very strong opinion about this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna find the pros and cons to this. Nope, me either. Be, because I just I have enough years behind me now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's let's just be honest. I have decades now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and that's the thing I do too. You know, it's the truth. Yeah. And that's my point is, you know, having gone through it firsthand, it's, I don't look back on that with fondness. I look back on that and go, wow, I was miserable. Like I've looked through some of my old notebooks or sketchbooks and gone, wow, you know, like I was in a bad place kind of a thing. I don't look back at it and go, man, I was creative then, you know, (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at it going, remembering the pain that 15 or 14 year old Brian was going through mentally and stuff you know it's like that's what pops back into my head you know somebody else may go wow that's really creative but if i tell them the story then they're probably gonna go "Ooh, you know (laughs) yeah exactly yeah you know it's really true it's it's really true it's yeah (laughs) like you said it there's plenty of examples out here and i think this is actually another key thing there's there's plenty of examples out there of people doing what what you know you or me as an artist would want to do, and they're doing it in the right frame of mind. Yeah, they're doing it in coming from a place of love, and they can be, and they could be, you know, coming up with some outlandish stuff. Yeah, and but they've learned how to do it. It's like find out, find those people, and model yeah. yourself after them. Seriously, ex- mm- explain a lot of hardcore music 
because a lot of those bands were straight edge, you know? Yeah. Like, but they wrote really important kind of political type songs. Not all of them, but you know, there were plenty of, of stuff, very important and really great creative stuff being put out by people who are a hundred percent sober, you know? Yep. Or as far as we know, a hundred percent sober, <laughs> you <know? laughs> but you know what I'm saying is, is there's that it, it's, you know, it, it's out there. Like you were saying, it, it's out there. And you just have to become comfortable with who you are once you're moving through or past something. Cause you know, if, if I sat down today and was drawing like crazy and then a year from now I sat down and was drawing like crazy, I would expect it to look differently. You know, I wouldn't expect it to be the yeah. same thing because again, I'm not the same person. Not to mention the more you draw, you know, you, you develop a voice or a, a style or whatever, you know, so there's that element to it too. So it's just don't get, you know, if you're listening to this and you are a person who draws from that stuff, just just don't let it control you. Don't let it overwhelm you. There's nothing wrong with drawing from it. And if you're depressed and that's the best way to deal with it, by all means, draw all the day. <laughs> you know, draw all the time. That's what I did to get through a lot of it. You know? So, you know, by all means, use it as a tool, but don't uh, try not to become comfortable with it. Because when you, know, you, that's, you know, that's actually, you know, you, you brought it, that's the real crux of this whole thing is, is, and it's kind of what was, we talked about in the beginning is this is an outlet for many people. Mm -hmm. The, the writing is a way for them to get it, to get it out there. But, and, and it's, it's a, it's a tool that I would recommend too is write, write, do whatever you can to get your thoughts yeah. out there, stuff like that. But in a way you're practicing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've talked in the past about like, uh, you know, doing journaling just as a way of getting things out or gratitude, you know, lists so that you're framing things in a positive way. And it's, yeah. you know, it's like I said, it, unless you're, you know, even if you're drawing stuff like people getting bludgeoned and decapitated and stuff, it's like, that doesn't mean you have to be depressed to draw that stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there drawing that stuff or writing really like, hardcore kind of, you know, dark, uh, metal music that really are like, eh, whatever, you know, they're probably just regular guys or women, you know, <laughs> you know, they, you see them picking up their paper on the weekend in their robe, just like anybody else. But on, you know, the rest of the time they're, you know, wearing all black and headbanging, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> well, that's a good topic. I'm glad yeah. we finally got to talk about this. Me too. This is one that I, you know, I always... I always wanted to talk about, honestly, this is one I've wanted to do since we started the podcast and I just never really pushed it. So I'm, I'm glad we got to do this. Yeah. So yeah, if, if you're listening and you're, you know, you want to talk more about this, we're either one of us, I'm sure would be more than happy to talk about it. And again, I'm not, you know, keep in mind once last time, I'm not saying that this does not exist. I'm just saying that I don't like the word, like we've talked on the show before about how, the ch you know word choices matter and i think when you you know when you treat this in a good manner you're doing a disservice to your to yourself as far as getting better from your mental illness you know so just you know just be careful with it you know or keep drawing like that or writing music like that or whatever but stay in therapy to make sure that you're still between the lines you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're still on the road so, uh, yeah, and I guess, uh, you know, as Jen usually says, um, you know, it would help if I pull up the email that has all the links on it. <laughs> as Jen usually says at the end of the show here, you know, if you'd like to continue the conversation with us, uh, you can reach us at the, uh, our website, thecrazylifepodcast.weebly.com. You can email us at thecrazylifepodcast at outlook.com. Jen can be found on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life, and that's Jen with a G. And Heno? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno, I-D-A-H-E-N-N-O, or just search for L Heno. That brings me up too. <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, you can find me at Heno Heiter. Send me a message uh, through Messenger on either case with Twitter or Facebook. Um, oh, I had a really funny thing when I went to a, um, uh, the forum I was at. There was a real estate uh, they had a couple of presentations and there was one guy doing a presentation on um, millennials as the, the next clients in the real estate industry and the certain things about millennials and how they use devices. And one of them was that uh, I think it was 29.
99% of millennials said that they do not check their voicemails. And the guy said, do not trust your sale on a voicemail to a millennial. You've yep. got a 30% chance of losing it. That makes and sense. Because they don't call it a phone. They call it a device. Yep. And it was really a fascinating um, discussion. Then the other one that was interesting is he asked how many people in the room use Twitter. And there was like three hands went up out of like a hundred people in the room. And I was shocked. <laughs> really? Wow. I Real actually, estate agents. I actually expected it to be the opposite. You know, there were like only yeah. three people didn't raise their hand. Wow. But I bet yeah, if you said was- Facebook, the whole room would have raised their hand. Yeah, I think there's a lot, there are a lot more that are, but I, you know, I, I just, it, it's generational too, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, it and, was interesting because it, in it made me think about it. Yeah, in your market, because, you know, like we've talked about, like, Salty Language, um, the other podcast I do, is we're not a Facebook podcast. You know, we're not for the Facebook crowd. You know, we're, for the most part, Twitter is a much better home for us to promote ourselves. You know, and like real estate, Facebook makes way more sense than Twitter does, you know, to promote yourself. Cause you can, you can, you know, put longer winded things. You can, you know, well, you can do ads too. Which exactly. Is- yeah. So it makes sense. And I think that has a lot to do with it too. Cause I know some podcasts that do great on Facebook, you know, that get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, likes and all that kind of stuff. But I also know quite a few that it's like, yeah, nobody ever looks at our stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, I think it's just you finding your, where your audience is, especially with the social media stuff, you know, you got to figure out what your market is and then go, okay, well, we're going to focus on that or whatever. So, uh, okay. Where were we? Oh, you just gave your Twitter stuff. Uh, yep. you can find, oh, you can also find the show at the crazy life pod. I post when new episodes go up. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. Uh, you can find uh, my other podcast, which I just mentioned, Salty Language, at uh, Salty underscore Language or at SaltyLanguage.com. That show is not Facebook friendly and not safe for work. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, mm-hmm. you, speaking of Facebook, you can find our group at Facebook.com slash group slash Crazy Life Podcast. Where we, and we've got a bunch of good resources over there in the notes page. Um, uh, for like suicide prevention hotline numbers, NAMI.org's information, and uh, just things that may help if you're looking for help. Uh, we're part of the Tangentbound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. Um, there's something else I was going to say there, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, well. Um, oh, you can find my blog, which I didn't update last week, but I plan to this week, at stunami.wordpress.com. And, you know, you can read old ones if you haven't read those yet. And uh, I think that's all that stuff. So with that, we're uh, not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind. We're just two people giving our very biased opinion. And <laughs> hmm. at least this week, you know, we know we really do normally try to stay, you know, to see both sides of stuff. But this one's a tough one. Um, anyway, so, you know, don't. Don't mistake this, uh, or don't take this show as a replacement for therapy. Please don't self-diagnose. You know, if, if you feel that you need some help, please seek it out. Um, you know, don't, don't just listen to what we talk about and say, oh, that's my, you know, that's how I'm going to treat myself. You know, go, go get the estimate as I say all the time. Um, and then, uh, if you feel as though you may harm yourself or others, please reach out to, you know, a friend. Uh, somebody, you know, whether it's a medical professional, a friend, whatever, uh, it's a suicide prevention hotline number, whatever you have to do, but just try not to be alone, uh, during that time. And, um, you know, if, and this goes back to like, even as I've mentioned before, even if you are thinking about it, like planning how you would do something or writing a, a note Anything along those lines, please, you know, reach out to somebody. That's a, you know, that's an early red flag to where maybe you can stop something before things get more dire. Um, and then lastly, as we mentioned, actually, toward the top of the show, <laughs> uh, reach out to somebody. You know, uh, tell somebody that you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. Um, just contact somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Or like Heno, you know, uh, just reach out to somebody who was nice. You know, during a game, 
know, just do something like that because you just never know when what you're doing may help somebody, you know, uh, whether it's making their day just, you know, it may keep them from killing themselves because they finally feel, you know, like, oh, someone does care, you know, or, you know, sometimes people don't tell other people, but you've helped them secretly, you know, so, yeah. Whew. Yep, yep. I think that's all of it. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. I guess uh, you want to take us out of here, Hanno? Yeah, everybody. Have a great week. Try not to throw a temper tantrum (laughs) and keep breathing.